All right, so what we're looking at today is that we're going to be looking at what's called uh, space figures and cross sections, and we're going to be introducing these uh, 3D figures into our uh, our uh, learning today. And so we're going to be looking at something called a polyhedron. And what a polyhedron is is that it's a 3D figure that is consisted of polygons. Uh, most objects in the world is, are made up of uh, polygons and it's uh, 3D figures. I mean, you think of a, uh, a DVD box, that is, or DVD case, that's made up of uh, rectangles, usually. And so, with that, we're able to, uh, that is a polyhedron, it's made of polygons that are put together into a 3D shape. And so that's what we're gonna be looking at, and we're gonna go into finding the area, volume, and a bunch of different things with these. Right now, we're just kind of doing an introduction, naming off different things. So these are different examples of polyhedrons. Uh, we've got a cube, a tetrahedron, a dodecahedron, and an isohedron that are listed here. And these are just different examples. Um, these are actually pretty fun to make. And uh, you can put them together, and you can make uh, bigger polyhedrons based on smaller ones. All right, so there's three parts of a polyhedron that we have to name. The face, the edge, and the vertice, or the vertex. Vertex vertices. And so the face is the flat side of it. If you were to look at some sort of object and you go, hey, look at this side, it's flat. Well, that is the face of it, okay? It's the polygon that is in this polyhedron, okay? So, like in this case, it's the triangle here. In this case, it's the squares that uh, make up that cube. Uh, the next thing is called the edge. That's where two polyhedrons meet. Uh, and it's the line segment that is created. So as we see here, here is your edge where the purple and the yellow one meet. And you can see a lot of different ones here where they intersect. And so those are your edges. Okay, so it's where two polygons, uh, yeah, two polygons meet in a polyhedron. Okay. Uh, and then the last thing is called the vertex or the vertices. And these are where uh, multiple edges meet, uh, multiple uh, uh, faces come together at a single point, and it is a point. I mean, if you were to touch, you go, ow, my finger type of thing, you know, because it, it comes to a point. And that's a vertex. So, okay, so a vertex is a point, an edge is a line segment, and a face is a polygon. Okay, so that helps you with kind of naming it. All right, so again, vert vertices. So if we want to name the vertices of this uh, pentagonal pyramid, uh, pyramid with a pentagon base, uh, when we name the vertices, all we have to do is name the points. So the points here would be A, B, C, D, E, F. That's it. Okay. So those would be your vertices. You're just naming off the points that make up this polyhedron or this 3D figure. Next, we're going to want to name the faces. And the faces, uh, again, you're naming the polygons. So uh, the first thing that we would want to do is name, okay, well, we've got a triangle here. Well, that's triangle A, B, C. Next, we've got triangle ACD, and then we've got triangle ADE, and then we've got triangle AEF, and triangle ABF. So we've got all those triangles. So we've got five different triangles, but then we also have this base that we have to account for. And that base is a pentagon, so we would name it as BCDEF. And that is our pentagon base pyramid. And so that's how we would name our faces. If they're triangles, say triangle, quadrilateral, quadrilateral. If it's just a polygon, then say polygon, blah, 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 blah. Okay. And so you name off the parts. Next, we have the edge. The edges, which are all these line segments. Okay. So your edges here, we've got an edge of, looks like AB. We've got edge BC, CD, DE, EF, uh, BF. We've got uh, AC, AD, AE, AF. So as you see, we actually have a lot of edges in this case. They're actually the most out of all of them. Okay. And so this leads us to something that's kind of cool. If you look at this, if you add up the number of vertices, you get six. Add that to the number of faces, six. And then you set it equal to the number of edges, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 10, you add 2 and they're equal. Now you might think, well that's kind of a cool quinky dink. Well, 
It's actually not a coincidence. It's called Euler's formula. And what Euler's formula says is that if you take the number of faces, you add it to the number of vertices, it will equal the number of edges if you add 2 to the number of edges. So f plus v equals e plus 2. And Euler was a famous mathematician from way back in the day. He did a bunch of other stuff. Uh, if you look at graph theory, Euler circuits, uh, if you take discrete math, you uh, get into this stuff. And it is kind of cool, and it, it helps you uh, figure out different things. Uh, Euler's constant, E, uh, is another thing that you would see uh, if you take discrete math or even pre-calc. Uh, and Algebra 2, uh, you'll talk about it as well uh, with PERT and different things. But you'll see Euler's constant come up. And uh, so Euler's formula is uh, dealing with this. And so it's faces plus vertices equals edges plus 2. So if we know the number of edges, 9, and we know the number of vertices, we're able to figure out how many faces this polyhedron should have. So f uh, plus 7 is equal to 9 plus 2. So that would be 11 is equal to 7 plus f. And then it's just algebra the rest of the way through. f is equal to 4. So that means this polyhedron with this setup should have four faces. It's kind of cool. So we're able to identify if this is possible or not based on that. OK, the next thing is called a cross-section. And so we do a lot of things with cross-sectional area in higher levels of, of math. Uh, when you get to AP, if you take calculus, uh, you deal with cross-sectional area and then using the volume based on the cross-sectional area of different things. And so what the cross-sectional cross-section is that if you take a polyhedron and you cut it off at some angle, either vertical, horizontal, at a 90-degree angle, at a 40-degree angle, at a 10-degree angle, however you cut it, what's going to happen is that another shape is going to be formed, maybe even multiple shapes. And so now the question is, what is that shape? So if you look at this pyramid, this pyramid has a base at the pentagon. So if we were to cut it horizontally, what shape would it be? Well, it's obviously a pentagon, Okay, if you see this piece of paper coming through. Now, if we were to cut it up and down vertically, what shape would it be? Well, it'd actually be a triangle, which is kind of cool. Now, if you look at this one, where you've got this butter knife cutting through this triangular prism, uh, if it cuts it vertically, it's got a triangle. But if it were to cut it horizontally, it would actually make a rectangle. And you kind of can think about this as if you were to take this cross section, cut it off, and then put ink on it, and then stamp it, what shape does it make? That's kind of what you're looking for the cross section. Okay, so your IRAT, your Individual Readiness Assurance Test, what you're going to be doing here is that you're going to be naming the edges, vertices, and faces of this triangular prism, uh, A, B, C, and X, Y, Z. And then after that, you're going to be finding the number of faces that would have to be in this polyhedron uh, with this follows, following setup. So five vertices, or ten vertices, sixteen edges, how many faces would it have? And then five vertices, seven edges, how many faces should it have? So you're going to use Euler's formula for those. Okay, And so that's what you're going to be doing.